Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Ah, the dreaded first date. You know, when I started working as a matchmaker, it was a little bit sexist, I think. I assumed that women were the ones to believe in love at first sight. Shockingly, I have had way more male clients who seem to fall quickly, very quickly. They often believe in fate or love at first sight, but they're also the ones most often expressing disinterest in second dates due to a lack of chemistry. Come on guys, let's think about first dates. Actually, let's discuss them. That's what's on the agenda. You're a guy, you're meeting a stranger for the very first time in a romantic setting. Pressure much? You have to decide what to wear, how to style your hair, if you should wear a cologne or not. Meanwhile, your date started getting ready could be two hours before you, could be 30 minutes. I don't know what who you're dating, unless I'm your matchmaker. <laughs> but she has to make a ton of other decisions. Should she wear a skirt, pants, a dress, heels or not, more makeup, less makeup, hair up, hair down. She also has to outline her escape plan in case things get creepy. Because guys, we always have an exit strategy in mind on first dates, because you never know. And to top it off, she's probably wearing some sort of shaping underwear to exhibit the best possible figure, which also means there's a chance she's physically uncomfortable. Maybe not. Some people do, though. Next, it's time to get to the date. If you're in a major city, you have to decide between taking a cab, the train, an Uber, driving, all transportation methods in which punctuality depends on external factors. If you live in the suburbs, you have to worry about traffic and parking. That's a fresh batch of stress. Don't even think about the added anxiety if something goes wrong along the way, causing you or your date to be late. Okay, you finally made it to the date. Now with most matchmaking services, you don't see a photo or speak to your date before you get there. That in and of itself can cause the jitters. Next comes a flood of second guessing. Should I order food? If I have another drink, will they think it's a problem? Maybe I should have eaten beforehand. Should I pick up the tab? Should I offer to pick up the tab? Share the tab. There are so many choices to make, you can't possibly focus on your date as a person. You likely aren't even 100% yourself on this first introduction. It takes a while to warm up, if you warm up at all. That's my point, guys. First dates can be quite awkward. There's so much stress on both parties that true personalities rarely shine through. Unless you have a knee-jerk reaction of hell no to the person you just met, you should always give the second date a chance. To be clear, this isn't about agreeing to a pity date or anything to that effect. Second dates are an opportunity to actually see if there are indeed fireworks or chemistry, but with less nervousness there to put out the sparks. I could share with you dozens of horror stories describing very mortifying first dates that ended in love. Caught you there. Romance and even marriage sometimes from bad dates. Some of these stories belong to me, some to matchmaker friends. The point is, you never know what introduction may lead to a relationship. You might think you know, you may think you've got it figured out and if there's no angels singing, clouds parting, fantastic first date, chemistry, both emotionally, physically, sexually, conversationally, and if that's not happening, that you're just out of there, that was maybe even early. That could be the way you operate now, your modus operandi. And I get it. I've had plenty of clients who that's how they started. But over time, they learned that second dates are a gem. They're, <laughs> they're just really a great opportunity because sometimes they lead to very surprising outcomes. And to miss out on that, to miss out on meeting your woman, your wife, because you were too distracted by her nervousness or the fact she couldn't be herself, that she'd had a bad day or just had a bad date last weekend and came in with bad expectations herself. You just weren't clicking because music was too loud or the waiter was rude or somebody was staring from across the room or you're at a place that has a television somewhere. All these things can sabotage you and keep you from meeting your person who may in fact be sitting right there at a table with you or standing beside you on this walk or on this bleacher or on this blanket, wherever you are. 
this person could be somebody who would be a great partner to you. And to say no to a second date is really biting off your nose to spite your face. If you're matched by a matchmaker for a date or by a friend, there's a reason for it. They saw some sort of a thread that would connect the two of you. Going on a first date isn't giving that a chance. Going on a second date is. I hope you found that interesting or helpful. If you did, give the episode a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. Oh, look at my mom. Isn't she cute? I'm going to recommend this episode for you right here because first dates, that's really where it all begins and maximizing potential, really important. I'll look forward to seeing you back here again soon. And until next time, thank you and have a good one.